Deconstruct is a weird word, because I know a lot of you guys are killer players on your own, but just laterally show some ideas that I've been uh, thinking about and playing on for a little while. And I also said at the beginning of this whole thing that I would give a guitar a lesson, and it's now's the moment. So I'll wait when you go get a guitar. Many of you already have a guitar. Many of you don't play guitar. Of that group, some may find it interesting, and some may not find it interesting. But um, I want to get into phrasing, namely the idea of vocabulary. So guitar players are always in the market for more licks, more shapes, more tricks, more, more phrases to learn. But I would say in this conversation about guitar that much like the alphabet has 26 letters, you don't have to learn any more letters in the alphabet. There are none. Spoiler alert. It's what you do with the letters. So what I'm going to show you actually involves no new learning if you're at an intermediate level when it comes to blues playing. So the first thing I want to show you, and let's pick the key of uh, C. Everyone thinks about pentatonic. That's all pentatonic. And now the first thing they teach you when you learn how to play solos is that's minor pentatonic. And that this four frets below, really three frets below, is the major pentatonic, and it's the same shapes. And so the thinking is, this is blues. And this is major. Now, they're two very, very different sounds. We've talked before about mixing up major and minor, which is cool. You know, like... So that's both, right? It's not... That's major. Um, I'm going to show you how to play minor pentatonic in the same spot you play major pentatonic. Now this, maybe some people are like, duh, we already knew this. I'm going to come clean and say, I never really thought about this until the last couple years. So you're in C, and I'm sorry that the screen is flipped for the selfie camera, but... So this idea... That's the pentatonic. I want you to think of the C across the neck as the equator. And this is sort of above ground, and this is sort of below ground. So everyone is always thinking about, here's C, everything happens above it. What I think is really interesting is, here's C, let's be symmetrical and move out this way and out this way. And the way you would do that is go, instead of, you're really just moving. So I'm going to show you what that's like. This is playing a minor pentatonic in C, but in that same area as a major. major but you're playing it in minor and what that means is that the ergonomics of it are flipped and I'll show you what I mean. So a lot of what guitar players play is based on what's available to them in terms of hammer-ons and pull-off. But there's all these, it gets inverted when you go uh, So take this. shaped that way in terms of kicking off so we've all done that if you want to get around it or versus it's so much fun so if we're in C I'm gonna play everything underneath that equation Major. 
standard pentatonic. So if you think about it like, that's not a capo. You can move that anywhere you want. You can take it off at any time. So I really wanted to get into that first. So. What that also does is helps connect all the minor pentatonics on the neck. So if you're in C, a lot of people are like. And they immediately go. You know, that booty child spot. But if you use that reshaping of the major pentatonic, you got you have it in the standard spot. You just went. And then of course you got the BB King spot. Let's go from that all the way down. Well, there's my major pentatonic, and I don't want to play that, so I'm going to jump over it. But if you reconstitute that major pentatonic scale as a minor, then now you have that much more to do. So that's sort of the chapter one of it all, is... It's just a different flavor to play with. that's not a standard shape. Even though the notes are pretty much the same, that's really fun. Um, so let's do it in a different key. play the guitar. If, you're, if you've learned the pentatonic and you've played along the blues records and rock records and you've soloed for a while, you already have all the moving parts. What we're all learning how to do is think that you, to do that then. So you know all the letters in the alphabet. They're very easy to learn on the guitar. And then that's the minute to learn. And the lifetime to master part is how you sort of implement it and how you think. So at a certain point, all learning guitar from records is, is going, oh, you would do that then. Oh, okay, so you're not learning how to, how to play that type of thing. You're learning that you can play that type of thing at that point in time. So, like, let me show you some playing that you would, ex you would know how to play if you soloed and played guitar. You would just know how to do it. For instance, let's, let's, let's change. Let's go, to, let's go to B flat. So, let's say that's true, you know. Just think you can slide. into the first note. When I started doing that, I was like, oh, nobody, I never thought to slide into the first note. So they're all taste decisions. And a lot of times we're thinking of, but again, if, if you want to combine the first chapter of what I was telling you with this one is, yeah. Thank you. 
going until you mess up. If you play and you haven't messed up, you should keep playing, and then you will mess up. So that's what I kind of wanted to show. I don't have the pick I love, but eh, that's part of being a guitar player. Let me turn up a little more gain, a little more treble. Wish there was a band. I mean, I wish people could have bands right now. So, uh... <laughs> of how you can tell it's not the standard. If you wanted to do it in normal, it'd be... Which you could do, but it just doesn't come to mind ergonomically. Also, different parts of the neck, the note sounds different, even if it's the same note as a different string somewhere else. And ergonomically, having to hold... of what to do but sort of just explore that spot so if I'm in D which would be it's not really there but It's very important. It's uh
third thing I want to get to now. So when I was growing up, I would play guitar and watch TV. And when the, t when the show was on, down to zero, sit on the couch and watch TV. A big part, of, you can't practice guitar and be on social media because social media requires 100% of your attention all the time. But you were able to watch TV, you can still watch TV, and have your guitar on. And it would feel good. The guitar players know what I'm talking about. You just have it on. You watch TV, and the person on the TV says, Coming up next on Dateline, remember the mechanic who said he'd never been to Darcy's house? You're like, okay, cool, this is going to be exciting. After this. And then it's a car commercial. And then you sit up, and you go... <laughs> I can do that. I just didn't for a while. And now I can. And there's a spirit in that moment where you're like, what would I play first? That is you sort of finding your vocabulary. And whatever you choose to play, there's a reason you choose to play it. And I, what I like doing now is just sort of like, well, what would I play if I played? And the reason that's a good thing to do is because you don't get stuck in the rote mechanics of soloing based on the shapes. So if you were in, let's pick G. Even just that one chord, how would you come in on that? I mean, you could just start throwing shapes at it. Ah. Let's go to four. little part I want to tell you about. So there's these things that are guitar-only licks, meaning they don't really exist in any other instrument. And the question would be why? The answer might be because they don't really sound good as much as they feel good to play. I'm going to show you lick offender number one. Um, there's, this is a fun guitar thing to do. I don't really understand the genesis of it or, or, or the need to do it. So let's do this in, uh, let's do this in A. I don't understand. That one I don't get. And the, the reason I don't get it is because would a voice do it? Sort of. It's not really vocal. And so a lot of what I've been playing lately is really vocal. And the way that you can get more vocal in your playing is very simply, number one, listen to a lot of blues singers. If you want to be a blues guitar player, listen to a lot of blues singers. Most of what I play are, well, half of what I play, I think I'm thinking about someone singing. And B.B. King Live at the Regal. It's like a better, well, it's both an incredible vocal record and a guitar record. But at first you're like, what a great guitar record. And then you realize his singing is just as good as his guitar playing. They're the same thing. One is just vocalized and one is played on the guitar. And you start to get these microtonal things. So. Microtonal stuff. Do you hear how that's not correct in terms of being perfectly in pitch. That's all very vocal stuff. 
little bit down now. <laughs> It's not. It's. That's highly out of tune, but so is a voice when it's in the middle of wailing. blessed sounding thing in the world. Steve Miller also does it. You can hear that, you know. Just watch, you know, the Dateline shows you 50% stuff you already saw again. Remember? And when I watch Dateline, I try to look for a little bit of orange jumpsuit uh, under the shirt of everyone who's talking, because they always do that pan out at the end where you're like, that guy's in jail. So you know if they always show the person from like the chin up on Dateline, they have a jumpsuit on. Everyone else, you can see the decolletage, you can see the shirts, but the guy who's from here up, that guy's got the yellow jumps, the orange jumpsuit on. So we're sitting. We're not necessarily playing right now. But I can just feel, I can just feel, and I can feel music going all the time. And then the show goes to commercial, and I just get to play what I... <laughs> Pentatonic, the minute they learn pentatonic with a little bit of right hand dexterity can go. Inside of that is a t 
ton of choices that you learn how to make. <laughs> doesn't sound right to me. Uh, sometimes it's okay, but well, the best is. It's the green onion solo that Steve Cropper does. I think it's like. but it's all about how you implement it. And most of the time, just like language in real life, most of the time we're not walking around using $50 words. Most of the time, and our favorite conversationalists, use groovy, folksy language, words we all know, but just not in the way we would have thought to use. That's how I think your playing can get, not forget about better, just more fun, just more exciting. So, and every time is like a new, it's like being a guitar player alone in your room is like driving golf balls, but you never have to go get the balls and bring them back. It's constant resetting. Uh, here comes a tee, here comes a ball. Boom, whack. Anytime you want to stop and put a new ball on, you just go, here's a new ball. So just pull, pull your hands wherever you want. <laughs> It's Ouija board. Just keep going. Just, and especially on Instagram, it's very hard to play stuff while other people are watching, you know, because you go, well, what if I get it wrong? I don't know. Let's get it wrong for a minute. Sit, sit with your guitar and just, just go around the board. You feel it's... Makes me want to sit and like figure it out. I'd uh, be like, uh, if you threw a party and invited everyone to sleep, you would see the biggest difference from me and the car. Ah, got a touch, but say thank you for being a fan. with some background music and I could show you how to sort of float on this stuff, but don't we all wish we had people to play with at the moment? Any questions? I really think you can get a lot out of going back to your guitar and picking a key and looking at where you normally just think below that. Uh-huh. Everything is just different. It's the it's the upside down. It's the ups, It's literally the pentatonic upside down. If you bought an acoustic, but you don't know how to play. Well, you're halfway there. The one thing, if you're like, I know how to play the guitar and I don't have one, that's a problem. Having a guitar and not knowing how to play it seems to be a much more feasible scenario to learn how to play the guitar than. I'm a real good guitar player. It's just at this point in time, I don't have a guitar. Uh, 
So yeah, what do I think when I improvise a solo? Leave room for the future of the solo. Um, and thank you, Tosin. This, this color is, this is the easiest on the eyes. This will probably always be the color. This is Moxan. This is the PRS Silver Sky, by the way. Let me take off the snark for those who are perpetually offended by a snark. This is the PRS Silver Sky. And I think it goes beyond signature model. It's a total ground up reworking of the vintage Strat guitar style. And uh, believe me, if I wasn't happy with it, you wouldn't catch me playing it every time now. But this is it. This is this has uh, this has this has won some pretty incredible shootouts uh, in the studio. Some people who were naysayers went, "Wait a minute, which one is that?" And I went, "Open your eyes." And they went, "Come on!" But um, this color is just—I can't get enough of it. But um, oh, solos. So I think, as a general rule. You want to move up in pitch during your solos, not down. Uh, because I think there's a sense of growth in the narrative of a solo when you go higher. Jerry Garcia was great at that. I think most great guitar players instinctively understand that if you're going to solo for a while, Doyle Bramel II is the master of if, you know, there's a song in C. Now, this is going to be a lot of you that I'm going to sound like right now. And I'm not putting anyone down, nor am I putting down the legends before who have done it, but it's meant to make a point about choices, about what I'm talking about where you're supposed to, where I think you should let the note go higher as you go. If you start too high, you sort of go, uh, where do you go from there? If you've got two solos, and if you're in a scenario where you don't know when your solo is going to be over, a lot of times the singer or the, you know, the head musician gives you a solo and you're, you have to hand it back or they take it back. If you're like... It's very hard once you're... That's okay. again where are you going you can go okay what if you have to go around again you're sort of running out but if you were how long do you have before people get tired of that you have the whole neck left. So that's how I think about a solo. And then a lot of the time I think about being lyrical, being lyrical. And you also want to define the key change. And this is something that Grateful Dead music taught me. And a lot of people, again, you're doing it, you don't know you're doing it. But sometimes it helps to understand what you were doing that you didn't know so that you can make sure you're doing it all the time. When you're playing in a blues solo, the best soloists are defining the chord change. So you're in, you're in C. Yeah, that's okay. But if you really accentuate the chord change, that, to me, is really the final frontier of being a guitar player. So... I'm not going to play any chords, but I'm going, you're going to know when the chord changes. Also, it's a 12 bar blues, but you're going to feel when the chord changes. Thank you. 
identify where the chord changes are and really, and I'm not even sure exactly what I'm doing. I'm hoping that what I'm doing is in the key, and it is, you'd know if it wasn't. And, and so much of the pentatonic scale is shared over the three chords that you're playing when you're normally playing a one, four, five progression. But if you can really isolate the notes of those chord changes that are unique to those chord changes, then you really are so satisfying to the ear. What would you say the William Hung of popular guitarists? Oh, listen, I ain't talking shit as a guitar player. I have no shit to talk as a guitar player. Um, DM me later. No, I don't know. I don't possess, I don't possess, I mean, sometimes I'll be like, I don't get it, but I, I, don't, I, I don't, I hope it comes as no surprise. I have, no, there's nobody that I hate as a guitar player. Um, by the way, I'm just flicking a pick on them. Let's see. Uh, the quilt backdrop was actually, I should hear, I was doing a video for someone. Uh, Bob Weir's presence as a player, man, we had played Fire on the Mountain last year in my band a few times, just with my band. And then Bob came out in San Francisco and played Fire on the Mountain with me. Knocked me out. He plays in versions of things. It's genius. It's just, next time, if you're a deadhead, next time you're listening to a show, just listen to Bobby play. Just like solo Bobby in your mind and, and the things that are happening are, are insane. Uh, what am I playing out of right now? I am playing out of a Dumble Steel String Singer. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, and I just want to tell all you guitar fans out there, people on message boards, uh, tone is in the gear. It's in the gear. The hands, they're there to play the gear. But the tone is in the gear. It's not true. It's not true. Here's another shitty thing I thought. To say, I think of shitty things all the time. Um, this is funny. If you're a guitar player, uh, tell another guitar player this. Uh, it's not the notes you play. It's the notes I play. I always thought that was really mean. Uh, it's not the notes you do play. And they always want to finish. And you go, it's the notes I play. Uh, now, again, like, this is what I would be doing if Dateline was on and I was a kid. Cops was huge. Cops is filled on, on location with the men and women of law enforcement. I'd be like, boop, let's go. Back growing up, cops always came on if you didn't go to parties. Those who are cops fans from the late 80s uh, never got invited to parties because cops came on like Friday night. Or I think Friday night or Saturday night. And everyone else would be at parties and I was never invited to parties. Cry for me later. And I would just sit and watch cops. So if you, if you have a memory of watching cops when you were a teenager, it's because you didn't go to parties. That's a good way to find out if someone was cool when they were in high school. Did you ever watch cops in high school? They'd go, excuse me? You'd be like, yeah, you went to a lot of parties. But I stayed home and I played guitar and I watched TV. And that's sort of what I'm doing right now. It's just feeling the music. And sometimes it's just... Sometimes I pick a key on the neck based on the elasticity of the string and the scale length, you know? show that to you. Just don't forget, this is C. Telling you, inverted. Now that sounds a lot like Albert Collins, 
And the reason Albert Collins sounded like that was because he was, he was always an alternate tuning, which, which changed his hammer-ons and pull-offs. Come on. I could play forever and I will. Uh, go mess around with that. And uh, I wish a hashtag it or something. I'll check that. I'll check the uh, I'll check my hashtags. Throw a hashtag in with my name on it. Show off some of that uh, underground playing. <laughs> Have fun, everybody. Hang tight. Keep playing music. See you soon. Thanks for watching.